Welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host, along with, with uh, uh, Nanette uh, Bullabush. Uh, and we have, I think, a really interesting program to uh, discuss about the uh, uh, Master Naturalist program that's uh, taking place in Wisconsin. And what's interesting about this, this is a, a nonprofit group uh, promoting uh, the uh, better environmental uh, things that can take place and training people, training people to do this kind of work because obviously in our state parks and forests, uh, they aren't hiring many people. And if we want to stress the benefits of uh, our natural resources, this is a program you may want to hear about. We have uh, with us is the, uh, uh, one of the instructors, Drew Morris, along with Jim Buchholz, who's not here. Um, and welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, interesting uh, program, and we want to get involved in discussing what it's about because there may be some viewers that may want to join one of your next uh, uh, instructions. But, I certainly hope so. Well, yes. we'll try to get a few. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, the, uh, before we get into that, uh, if you instruct people on how to become master naturalist, uh, you must have a little background. Maybe you want to share that with the viewers before we get into the program. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It, my, my, uh, my career was in the more technical areas. and When it came time to consider retiring, I said I have to do something different. And I had the good fortune of running into Rebecca Clark up at uh, Maywood. And she convinced me to be brave enough to get involved in K uh, pre-K-12 environmental education of students. And, uh, it turned out, we later learned, that she was the daughter of my college classmate, <laughs> which was quite shocking because I hadn't seen him in 55 years. And uh, he went on and became a PhD physicist, and I realized my shortcomings and joined the Navy. Uh, so it was a fantastic reunion, and it gave me the beginnings of what's now, for the last 10 or 12 years, been a, been a real passion. Uh, Based on the things I was doing and learning at the Maywood environmental programs, I went to Florida and pursued the Florida Master Naturalist Certification. Mm -hmm. And that program was quite rigorous, 120 hours of coursework. Uh, and uh, I was doing a lot of interpretive work down in the Everglades and other areas. And at the same time, I'd come here every summer and I'd have to reacquaint myself with the near boreal conditions, having left the near tropical conditions. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's kept me spry. <laughs> well, no, no alligators here, but uh, obviously uh, that training was intensive that you had to become an uh, instructor in, in, the, uh, in the program. Yeah, well, here... And did they make you pay besides? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, all of these programs you, you have to pay for, However, it's fairly reasonable, and if there is a hardship, uh, in Wisconsin, we have uh, excellent scholarship programs. So when somebody applies for one of our uh, uh, courses, uh, there is an opportunity to also apply at the same time for, for scholarship money. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get that uh, at the end of the program, but first of all, I think the viewers need to know um, a little bit about the uh, master uh, naturalist program in Wisconsin and who runs it and how did that work out that you get to, and Jim Buchholz get to uh, uh, train people and how many have you trained? We'll get into all of those Great. things. So um, the uh, um, program uh, began uh, recently in the state of Wisconsin? I think it really got off to a start about three or four years ago. So it's new. It's relatively new and it was brought about uh, uh, when they realized there was going to be less and less funding, at one time there were uh, na naturalists on the payroll of the right. DNR at most of the state parks. And when they realized that wasn't going to happen, uh, this idea of creating the Wisconsin Master Naturalist Program came about to use citizens to fill the roles that formerly uh, state employees did. And uh, uh, Jim and I decided, uh, well, are we going to complain about the lack of funding? Or are we going to do something about it? And it's sort of like when you see a bunch of sea stars on a beach, how do you save them all? Well, you do it one at a time. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to train. We started a program uh, three years ago. And uh, each year we've had about oh, 15 to 18 
people go through the 40-hour program. But uh, you do that 40-hour program with homework in between because it's every Saturday for what about five weeks? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, six weeks uh, in six total, weeks. and uh, uh, they have to, uh, are encouraged to r study. This happens to be the course book, <laughs> and this course book is it got sections in it that also reference other material. Now, the the beautiful part about this for us older folks are there are no tests. So that's, uh, that keeps a lot more people coming to the program. But you do have to do a project, though. So. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a so capstone. So that's, that's sort of a test. Yes, indeed. And we encourage groups to get together mm -hmm. because everybody has different strengths. And the capstone projects are reviewed the last day. And each, uh, each uh, part group gets up in front of the total group and describes their project. And it's just fascinating. And again, it's... People have different bends for different things, and uh, we've had uh, uh, one one person from Warsaw actually did a capstone on a segment of the Ice Age Trail. Another one did a segment on, uh, excuse me, uh, did a uh, interpretive signs to go into Kohler Andre. Uh, a very active group of uh, of two women who are now spending a lot of time at Maywood as well as at uh, Kohler Andre. Uh, reactivated the bluebird nesting program uh -huh. and got scout groups to build the bluebird nest and they reestablished monitoring programs. And it just varies all over the place. It's as unique as the people. So how long does the program start? If I were to apply tomorrow, um, how long does the application process start and then how soon can I be a naturalist? Uh, you, it's it, Basically, they're scheduled all around the state. And I just looked this morning to see which ones are left. Uh, and, and different groups have different ideas. So Jim and I decided Saturdays was a good deal for us. And this, uh, the Saturdays leading up to Memorial Day. And so it starts out a little cold and hopefully it's warm by the time you get there. Well, and, and we'll also uh, publish the uh, website so that if people can't make the local one or they're from out of town, uh, yep. they, they can check and maybe uh, take a course being done at Walsall. Oh, uh, or they're down in Milwaukee, Madison. they're down all over the place. Madison, yeah. very active. Uh, I would encourage, it's the, it's the wimasternaturalist.org, mm -hmm. where it describes the program in detail, it describes all the other requirements. But basically, you sign up for a program. Some do it uh, on a one-week, everyday basis. Mm -hmm. Up north, they like to do that, and I think they get vacationing people. Sure. But then you're going to get retired people, not so much young people. And one of the things we've liked is we even had a high school student all the way to require a retired physician from Chicago exactly. who was living in, in the southern uh, Sheboygan County and thought he was up north. <laughs> <laughs> so once you become a naturalist, that means that you are now qualified to lead school groups, to lead Senior citizen groups to what, what yes. do they find themselves doing? Uh, and, and you get permission from the state parks to do some of that. Well, if it's a state park, it also can be with any other groups too. Sure. Uh, the, the three areas that we really focus on are training people for education and interpretation, mm -hmm. training people for citizen science, and training people for conservation. Uh, and and. There's so many different groups, and that's part of the course material is where do you find places you can volunteer? Mm -hmm. And there's literally hundreds of them, and they all need volunteers. Well, like Maywood and, and uh, uh, Terry, uh, Andrew Kohler State Park, the Kettle Marine, all youth volunteers. Ice Age Trail, Ice tremendous Age use. Yeah. Uh, I own other group, uh, uh, Glacier Lakes Conservancy. We have extensive use oh, of yeah. volunteers. Uh, it's just there's there's a million opportunities and but there's always up we we're currently running probably 12 graduates doing volunteer programs at uh color Andre. and even if you get a third of them staying active that is a benefit for the whole community with this added awareness they can become much more intelligent voters and That's look at what are the issues now that we face in wisconsin and how should we handle them sure Man. And not funding our state park with, with state money uh, may not be the direction they want to go. So they might learn about that. Uh, I would <laughs> hope so. <laughs> the, uh, one, once you become a master uh, naturalist, you're not done. If you want to stay a master naturalist, 
next year, what do you have to do? Yep, there's a, there, yeah, it's, well, well, it's, it's a good thing it's fun because you have to do 40 hours a year. Yeah, of, uh, of service work. Of volunteer service work in one of those three categories. Yeah. And you have to pursue eight hours of advanced training. Every year. Every year. However, the advanced training, uh, uh, there's so many opportunities for that. There was a, 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 a falcon, uh, not a falcon, a... Uh, um, Peregrine eagles Falcon. and things, oh. uh, uh, a uh, one hour course up mm. at Maywood. Oh. And there's another thing on certain plants, mm. another thing on rocks down at Colorandre. And I learned more about rocks. I think I know something about geology, but this guy was super. Well, they, so, you know, you can add up those an hour at a time if you want, but it just sure. has to be done in Wisconsin and it has to be live. It can't be a TV show. <laughs> So this is what I want to ask. So you have already trained several groups of people, and you've been involved since Rebecca Clark talked you into it. What surprised you the most? What, what have you enjoyed the most about being a naturalist? What, what do you think most people don't quite appreciate enough? Well, I think, well, my, my first love is interpretation, taking people outdoors on hikes. And you have to tell me what interpretation means. I know you know, but. Well, it's, it, it, it's not a show and tell, and this oh, is the right. key part. It's exposing people to what's in that forest or what's in that marsh mm -hmm. and having them draw out their own conclusions and you're just sort of helping them mm -hmm. get there. That's, that's my, my version of interpretation. Actually, there's courses about how to do interpretation. But uh, uh, what I love about it is, is interacting with people. Mm -hmm. Other people have different bends. They'd rather do citizen science and not interact with so much with people. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's part of the beauty of the program. So there's room for all kinds of personalities. Absolutely. Oh, we're down to two minutes, uh, uh, the, uh, Drew. So uh, one minute we have to close the, uh, the program, and one minute you, you can tell people how they can get in contact with you again on how they can uh, uh, find out about the uh, training and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, sign up. Absolutely. Uh, Jim and I are going to run the, the uh, basic program again next year. We took this year off because mm -hmm. we thought we kind of used up a lot of the local market. Uh, we did run Maybe our, we'll get you a few more? We did, oh, That's I hope so. We, well, I've already got four or five who want to sign up for it. Good. And because we ran an advanced training program this year. It was eight hours in one full day slot, mm -hmm. all the way from signing in Colorado to uh, visiting with Dumper Dan, there, right? talking about the sports fishing catch, yeah. and the Sheboygan River cleanup. It was, and everybody comes away saying, "What? A, what I learned so much, you know." So, if if you're interested in the program, interested in checking, uh, you have a website you can come to. You can you can always call Terry Andre Kohler Park. They'll provide you with additional information. We encourage you to uh, go on some of the things that you see advertised at the Kohler Andre Park to see what these um, semi-professional um, uh, master naturalists are doing for all of us. So we want to thank you for coming. Until next week, this has been Legislative Update. Thank you, Drew. Well, thank you. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, Welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you very much for joining us today. I think what we have is going to be an interesting program because, as you probably know, our health is the most valuable thing.